Well, Baruch, thank you for taking the time to visit with me. I'm Rick Joyner from Bible Study Company, and uh, just wanted to bring up a couple of things before we get started. We've had a number of questions come in uh, over time, and they're, they have a theological nature to them, and they're kind of tough to wrestle with, and I know of no better person than to contact uh, my good friend, Dr. Baruch Corman of Love Israel. Uh, Love Israel is literally a worldwide organization, and we highly recommend that you go to loveisrael.org and make sure you check out the YouTube channel that he has. I'll link it down below so that you guys can um, go and like and subscribe to his work. We've been friends for quite a while, and we are very thankful for uh, Baruch in showing us how to study scripture, to live a praiseworthy life to find the plans and pur purposes of God. Now, the other thing is we would really like you to support his organization, uh, support ours as well, but we really like you to support his. And uh, so again, we uh, thank you guys for attending. Now, you're gonna hear several different um, questions that pop up. And uh, as we go forward, we'll um, just talk about what those questions are. So do you wanna tackle the first one, which has two parts for me? Well, first of all, hi, Rick. Uh, shalom to you from Israel. I appreciate those kind words. It's uh, always uh, uh, delightful for me to be with you and, and especially with your wife, Mary, when Rivka and I and all of us are together. But I guess it's just you and me right now. So yes, let's, let's begin and tackle that, that first question. And I agree with you that, um, that Mary's much nicer than me. I didn't say that. I just said it was always nice when the four of us are together, too. I just I just added that in. So, um, OK, so Dr. Michael Heiser, as you know, has burst onto this theological scene, if you want to call it that. Um, he's written two books. One is called The Unseen Realm, which is used a lot. Uh, it's quite a tome, but it's used a lot in academic circles to discuss certain aspects of the Old Testament and Hebrew language. The other book he's written, well, and he's probably got other ones, but is a slimmed down version of that called The Supernatural. Now, I'm in seminary, and one of our seminary, we were required to study this book and do a book report on it. Now, his central, central thesis is that um, in Genesis 126, where it says, let us uh, make man in our image. His thesis happens to be uh, that the us there is the divine counsel. And so my very first question is briefly, if you could tell us a little bit about um, the divine counsel and where it fits into scripture. And we're, I'll give everybody a hint that it doesn't fit here and there's a reason why that is, but we'll also explain it. So uh, can you tell us why the divine council fits into this, not doesn't fit into this, but what the divine council is? Well, I, th I think you asked a couple different questions. Uh, in Daniel chapter uh, seven, we see that there were thrones set up and those who sat upon the throne in the heaven. And therefore, we're talking about thrones in the plural, and it seems to be that there's some uh, meeting, some council, as he coins, to refer to perhaps a, a heavenly council that, that uh, sits with God, and, and not that God needs help to make decisions, but simply we see that, that description in the scripture. So that's one interpretation of that. It talks about the, the sons of God. We see that in a couple different ways playing out in the scripture, terms relating to that. But, but with your permission, Rick, let's, let's look. And if you have your Bible, it might help us. Uh, I'm looking at the Hebrew text, and I think we see the same thing in the English or whatever language someone has. But this is a great example in my opinion, and I'm not trying to be unkind to, to anyone, that's not my heart, that's not my, my desire, but sometimes people coin something, and then because this is kind of their pet thing, they like to uh, see that in many different places, and the problem is that they, they forego 
simple hermeneutical and exegetical principles that have been handed down for centuries, and they ignore that because they want to further their interpretations or their doctrinal uh, inventions. Yeah, I think that's an excellent point because that was one of the things when Mary and I first came to you and started learning and watching your videos is breaking down what you were doing. And on Bible Study Company, I'll put this link below too. Uh, we have Dr. Baruch's 26 or 27 principles on our website. And we also did some podcasts showing how we use those. So, so, and that's a really big thing that you just said, because people tend to put their own view into the scripture and they learn from the pulpits a lot of time, the very same thing that the pastor has put his own view into the scripture. And then that becomes a denomination or a doctrine, but it really isn't. So I think your point is let's let the scripture speak what you're about to do. Well, uh, two things initially. Number one, those principles are not mine. They have Correct. been, been uh, uh, spoken of, taught for a long, long time by many people. I'm just repeating them. So they did not originate with me. But there's, there's again, a couple things that need to be pointed out. When, when we talk about about man, and I'm speaking about man in a very uh, broad sense, male and female, as we'll see, let us create man in our image. This is God speaking. The problem is, if it's the divine counsel instead of God, then we have a problem with our identity and who's creating. Let me give Good you an point. example. If, if the divine counsel is making man well, then you have a problem because it's God who created us, not the divine counsel. So right there, we have a, a theological problem that, that borders on heresy, that, that God's not the creator. And we know biblically, if we look at Colossians chapter one, it is Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, who created things and maintained things, holds things, all things hold together because of him. He is the, the cause of, of everything. So if it's the divine counsel, we have a conflict with scripture. So that's and, one. And from it's a also, standpoint. and they're also created. The divine counsel is part of God's heavenly family and they're created. That's right. We're not talking about uh, the Godhead, uh, also referred to as the Trinity. And many people will ask, do I believe in the doctrine of the Trinity? Yes, I do. Perfect. Me too. Yep. But, but let's look at this and here again. If we just allow the scripture and how the Holy Spirit inspired it to be written down, it clarifies something. And the problem is people run to their, their pet terms, their doctrines and such, rather than examining the scripture. So let's do that. Go to, if you could, to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 and 27. And these, just, these two verses mm -hmm. clarify something. So let's begin. Vayomer Elohim, and God said, Na say Adam, let us make man be salmenu, be salmenu in our image. And then it says, Kit mutenu, in accordance to our likeness. Now, this is important because we see in verse 26, our image, our likeness. But now let's go down to verse 27. And we see here, and God created man, same thing, vayivra, instead of nas, nase, we see a different verb, instead of make, it's the word create. And God created the man, notice what it says, not betsamenu, but betsamo, in his image. Mm -hmm. So this tells us something very important. In verse 27, we learn that God created man in his image, in the image of God. So the problem is if we interpret verse 26 and say this is the divine counsel, we have a conflict. Verse 27 says it's in the image of God. In exactly. verse 26, it's in the image of, of us. So verse 26, for these two to be in agreement and scripture is not at odds with one another, the us there 
must refer to God the Father, God the Son, and Holy Spirit, the Godhead. So we are created in the image of God. Of course, that word image, Salem, has to do with reflect. We're called to reflect the, the character, the holiness, the righteousness. That's how God originally created us before sin uh, attacked uh, that purpose. None of this surprised God. But here we can, can look at the text and say, undeniably, the divine counsel, as uh, uh, this individual says, cannot be the interpretation of, of Genesis 1, verse 26.